May, December, the new cerebral drama from veteran director Todd Haynes comes out this week on Netflix. It's already been out in theaters for a couple weeks. It stars Julianne Moore, Natalie Portman, Charlie Melton. And this is a really good drama. I really appreciated it a lot, and here's why. First, a little plot summary. I won't give too much away, but enough so that you can, you know, understand it. The movie shows a famous actress by, played by Portman, Elizabeth Berry, who goes to the house of Gracie, a 59-year-old middle-class woman. She's married to Joe. And what happens is that Berry wants to study Gracie. Why? Because she's going to make a movie about Gracie's life. Actually, the scandal in her life. And here's the scandal. Gracie had an affair with Joe back when Joe was a seventh grader. Gracie was a 36-year-old married woman with a son the same age as Joe. And here they are 23 years later, over 23 years later. They're married. They have three kids. They seem to be stable, have a decent house on an island, and everything seems normal. So Barry shows up played by Portman, and she's going to play Gracie in this movie, which is going to resurface or dredge up the past, this past scandal, called The Pet Shop Romance. Now, it's called The Pet Shop Romance kind of goofily, but it did take place in a pet shop initially. They made a TV movie about it. It's shown in the movie. It made me laugh. It's kind of cheesy. This movie has very interesting tones to it. It has this sort of 90s thriller, scandal thriller quality in the score, and some of the shot making, but there's some funny stuff in this movie, and you're not sure who to where to laugh at these people or to be very sad for them because this scandal has really negatively affected a number of people's lives, including Joe, who kind of never grew up. Gracie is a very messed up person, as we discover. But what's interesting is that Barry who I think is a method actress, just observes them. She wants to know the makeup of, you know, Gracie, and she wants to know her mannerisms, but she doesn't see everything that goes on with them, and so she's trying to become the real Gracie, but she may not be able to see everything about these people. Yet, what links will she go to to become Gracie? To become Gracie on screen, that is, and to know who she is as a person, how she works. That's method acting. But to what lengths will she go? I really like the way Portman plays this character. It's really an outstanding performance. And of course, Moore is always great. And Portman is going to imitate Moore. That's kind of the fun meta thing going on in this movie. But I think this movie, I think Todd Haynes loves loves moral, moral quandaries and bringing them up tough ones. And I think this movie does, at least my read of it is on method acting, on making movies about real people. It's movies about true stories or based on a true story. And what is Barry up to? She's going to recreate the scandal in her movie, recreate Gracie, a pedophile by, by the law's standards at least. And yet what are those things for for a movie? To exploit these people? To sell a movie as a product? And that's where I think Kane's, or at least this movie, is criticizing movies, method actors, for you know stirring thing all oh, the past up and nasty things of the past and exploiting people that's my read on this movie i think it has a moral dimension to it that way and i think it's a really necessary corrective to movies that are, that often are exploitative when they depict real people who have screwed up lives and here they are you know showing that off to the public we see the human drama with joe for example who's really a messed up guy trying to live a normal life but can't because his kids aren't like the same age as him, at least they look like it. She, he's had three kids with Gracie, and one's graduating high school, and yet here he is 36 years old. He was basically a teenager. He was a teenager when he had these kids. We see him texting someone in this movie. Who's he texting? That could be a thrill or a scandal that shows up later in the movie. And then Joe's kids, Gro and Gracie's kids, are kind of messed up, and they, some of them don't like Barry showing up to their house. And Gracie's child, you know, she had a son at the time of this affair who was in the seventh grade as well. He claims that his life was ruined. We get to see him a little bit. Also, Gracie's ex-husband and a number of people who were interviewed by Barry in this movie. And the scandal, everything, everybody's trying to patch things up, I suppose, or or forget about things. But when, the, when Barry shows up, the scandal is dredged up. Now, I've seen some people claim this is an All About Eve kind of movie. It is a little bit with a younger woman showing up and messing with an older woman, but it doesn't have that sort of power dynamic at all. It's not the same by any stretch. Actually, the power is in the actor showing up with the you know famous person showing up and then you know messing with this ordinary person's life, a person who was famous and now is going to be famous again because of this actor. The power is the other way around with Barry having it, in my opinion. That leaves Haynes to ask, I think, some giant, the movie to ask some giant questions. Should Barry be making a film here about this subject matter? And to what extent should, should she go to become Gracie? 
What do method actors not understand about real people? What things do they miss about real people? That's going to come up in this movie. It does for me. I think Haynes' framing is really interesting in this movie. You know, things look normal on the surface, but the framing is very odd at times. With characters thrown way to the side of the screen, sometimes in the corner, sometimes their faces are half off the frame. The cutting back and forth between characters and conversation is fascinating and really weird, or it's his own style. And I, but I think that has to do with the oddities and you know feeling uneasy about the whole situation from Gracie and Joe's own life to Barry coming in and messing with their lives with her sort of investigation. This is going to be a hard movie for people to watch. I think a lot of people will misunderstand this movie, think it's a thriller. The score kind of indicates it could be a thriller. Some of the things that happen seem to be a setup for things to happen later, but I think this is a more a meta observation on the, this movie itself and observations on movies that are based on true stories or true stories where real people can watch themselves be played by actors. You know, the ending of this movie will not probably satisfy anybody, but this is Todd Haynes, and he likes to talk about, I think, real-world scenarios, situations that a lot of movies that maybe no movie ever has talked about. So I love his movie Safe. Go check that out. I've done a video of that in his channel. And his filmography, you know, he, he's a thoughtful person. I think the writers here are thoughtful. The framing, the score, everything is intentional, obviously. So we have to ask why it's done the way it's done. So that's my take on this movie, but there might be others. What are yours? Let us know what you think of May, December. Let us know in the comments. Be thoughtful there. Please subscribe to this channel for more great content. Thank you. Have a great day.